number one, what is Turo? Turo is basically the Airbnb of cars. So if you think about it, uh, Airbnb, you book a place to stay and then that's your place to stay. So it's the same thing with the car. You book a car, then you get to use that car. It's uh, very simple. You pick up the car and then when you're done, you return the car. It's that simple. Question number two is how to list the car on Turo. So what you're going to want to do is go to Turo's website and you're going to click on become a host and then it'll open this screen and it uh, will give you some information. Um, you know, you can read through all this and then you're going to hit the get started button and it'll bring you to the screen. Now it's going to log me in already because it already has me as a host. But uh, in your case, you can connect with Apple or with your Google account or Facebook. And once you hit log in, it's going to take you to list your car. So here is where uh, you'll be getting so started. On this screen, you're going to want to go to where is your car located and you're going to want to enter an address. That and once you enter the address, you're going to hit the next button. Once you enter the information on your vehicle, it's now going to ask you what your goals are. So there's going to be some different options here that you can choose from, uh, whether it's just cover your car payment, uh, you want to generate side income, you want to expand an existing business, build a primary source of income, or you're just not sure yet. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit generate side income. Uh, how often do you or your family currently use the car? So never. And how often do you want to share your car? So let's go to often, most of them, always as often as possible. Uh, the car that I am going to list is... Um, you know, we got it specifically just for Turo. So I'm trying to get mine rented as often as possible. So once we choose these options, we're going to go ahead and hit next. And now it's going to ask for advance notice. So this pretty much means um, how much advance notice do you want before a trip starts? So if somebody require uh, request the car, Okay, if you choose three hours, that means you have three hours to uh, respond to that request. Um, depending on what you choose, if you notice this percent will change. For instance, one hour notice opens you up to nearly 100% of trips. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's pretty much what you think you'll be able to handle. Or will you be able to, let's say they request a car um, an hour away from where the car is located, you know, this one hour request isn't going to work. So I would stick with the three hour uh, request. That's a recommendation also. Um, trip duration. Okay. So what's the shortest and longest possible trip you'll accept? Uh, they, you know, recommend that you put one day. I myself uh, am going to put two days as the minimum. And then a maximum, uh, let's see here, I'll say three months, which I mean, I'm more than willing to rent it out for longer than that. Then we will hit the next button. And now, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> so now what's going to happen here is it's going to ask you for car details. So you're going to enter your license plate number, your state, and then you will choose your options here as far as what the car has to offer and then a description. So on your description, you want to, you know, sell your car pretty much. Um, what makes your car unique and why someone would love driving or renting your car. So we'll go ahead and fill that out. Okay, so now that we moved on to the next step, uh, we will be in the car photos area. And uh, they kind of give you, uh, you know, an example 
of what you should be uh, doing as far as your photos and um, the interior, back seats, trunk space. You want to make sure you show that in case, you know, you got people flying in from out of town. They want to make sure they have luggage space, um, you know, a couple of good pictures. So the next thing you're going to want to do is add your photos. And uh, once you do that, we can move on to the next step. Okay, so the next section is going to be the payout section. Um, Turo does uh, get a percentage of the amount that you make. Um, they are providing you with the um, app, uh, the website. Uh, they do get the information as far as the driver license and you know, verify emails and phone numbers for the clients that are going to rent your car. So um, depending on the plan you choose, you'll earn 60 to 90 percent of the trip price as well as some fees. Now, these fees uh, can be like um, delivery fees um, if they cause any damage as far as like uh, smoking when they know they shouldn't be smoking. There's a fee you can charge for that. Um, also, the higher your earnings, the higher your deductible will be. Uh, so if you have Turo and you want them to manage a claim for you, um, depending on what option you chose is going to be how much you're going to have to pay as far as the deductible. Um, what else? So you will receive 100% of the approved amount for reimbursement for missing fuel, uh, low battery charge or tickets, tolls. Um, I do have a toll pass on my vehicle. Um, and what I do is as soon as the car gets returned, I do go to the website and I start adding up all the tolls that they um, went through. And then I do submit that charge to Turo. And um, I haven't had a, any issues with the client paying those fees. Um, so, I mean, there's pretty much you can make more money than just the amount that you're charging for the rental. Um, so now we can go ahead and move on to the next part. Okay, for the maintenance requirements, um, Turo does require you to keep up with the maintenance of the vehicle. Uh, they do want you to have a safe um, vehicle for you and your guests. Um, you must follow all the laws and regulations for vehicle safety condition and operation and effect in your area. Um, you'll also have to be uh, getting annual maintenance inspections. Um, there is a checklist that they offer. I will uh, put that in my next video. Um, and that is annually. Turo will also charge you a violation fee if you haven't maintained your vehicle. Um, also, if they dispatch roadside service because of a maintenance issue, they will charge you a $200 fee as well. If it gets to the point where they think the vehicle is inoperable, they will remove it from the site and then you will have to get the vehicle repaired and go through them to be able to re-enlist the vehicle on the app. So now let's go ahead and move on to the final section. Okay, so now we are at the uh, end here. Publish your listing um, and it's going to ask you if you're ready to list your car on Truro, uh, you will be able to edit your listing and the availability anytime. So if some of the options that you chose right now don't work later on, you can always go in there and change that. Um, so you're going to want to hit the I agree to Truro terms and service. And then once you hit publish, it will say your listing is live so that's it guys um i hope uh, this video has helped you as far as um seeing how easy it is to list your car on the Turo app and uh, get started um you know whatever it is you're trying to do if you're just trying to get someone to make your car payment or uh you know you're trying to make some money on the side uh, whatever it may be and uh, like I said, I'll make some other videos with some different tips uh, that I've learned um, 
from you know having a vehicle already on Turo. This will be my second vehicle that I have on the Turo app. And uh, you know, I've learned some stuff the hard way. <laughs> so um, I'll be making another video on those. And uh, again, if you like my video, uh, if this was helpful, please hit the like button. Um, also hit the subscribe button, I'm sorry. And that way you can get uh, notified when I do uh, make those other videos. And uh, until next time, see you guys.